in Yemen, um, the Houthi rebels, who are a Iranian-backed rebel group, they are uh, they are Shiite. I don't, you know, the whole um, the hell is that? Just Somebody fucking earthquake outside. Um, market exhaust. The yeah, the Houthi rebels are a Shiite um, sort of breakaway group of Islam, like. The whole, that conflict, you know, obviously the Middle East is a powder keg. Right. Um, so for some background, the Yemen has been engaged in a civil war since like early, the early 2010s. Um, the U.S. is backing Saudi Arabia, who are funding Yemen's um, Sunni government, mm-hmm. who are fighting these Shiite rebels, the Houthis. Um, and then in 2014, the Houthis took Yemen's capital of Sana'a. And there's been a huge hot war there for a while that never gets any coverage because the U.S. is backing the people fighting the war instead of backing the people, the rebels. Right. Um, But those Houthis are now engaging in missile and drone strikes from Yemen on ships going through the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Right. Which are, um, some of the ships are Israeli, some of them are just carrier ships carrying goods to and from Israeli, including, you know, oil and petrol products. Um, And U.S. Secretary of State Lloyd Austin has now announced Operation Prosperity Guardian, a multinational coalition of 10 nations with the aim of combating these attacks. Mm -hmm. The coalition is made up of the U.S., Great Britain, France, Italy, Canada, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, Bahrain, and Seychelles. Seychelles really like threw me off because it's just a little tiny nation, island nation. Oh, I see it right there, yeah. Right there. I have no idea what their capabilities are. It may be just because they're well placed geographically yeah, for probably. Um but even before this announcement, the US has already been stationing destroyers in the region to try and protect ships, these shipping routes from the rocket attacks and drone strikes, but this move kind of signals a clear escalation. Um a number of large um, shipping giants and and petroleum giants have announced that they will be pausing shipments through the Red Sea because of increased attacks on these commercial vessels, including uh, Maersk and Evergreen, who are big shipping container companies, and BP, mm-hmm. as well as a few other oil giants. Um, and because of that, you know, instead of taking the very short route from, like, if you're coming from Asia and going through, you go through the Red Sea, through the Gulf of Aden, and through the Suez Canal and then into the Mediterranean and out into the U.S. Mm-hmm. Instead, now they have to go all the way around the Horn of Africa, which is adding up to 11 days to these right. ventures. Now, in 2021, an evergreen ship got stuck in the Suez Canal for six days, right. um, and it costed the world economy almost $10 billion a day, so almost $60 billion. Wow. Um, and I believe the number is something like 30% of global container ships go through the Suez Canal, mm-hmm. um, 10% of... All global trade by value is affected by this. So this is like, and now, of course, the calls for ceasefire and stuff are getting a little bit more traction because fuck the lives of Palestinians. Like, there's money on the line. Now we have to be... Uh, right, uh, yeah. But um, I think the, you know, the... What was I going to say? The uh, What um, always comes to mind for me when we talk about Yemen is that uh, drone strike when Obama was president mm-hmm. uh, that killed a bunch of people at a wedding right that like is sort of like oh well if you're a liberal like you love obama but look like he's and you know we've been supporting we as in the u.s have been supporting this war by arming saudi arabia and, and giving them munitions as well as not necessarily on the ground but like providing assistance military assistance in other ways yeah helping train forces Training that go there that. right um i don't think they need any uh u.s dollars over there that's for sure Apparently not. Uh, I did think it was interesting that um, in addition to our destroyers, I think there's two or three now. The USS Kearney is there as well as other ones. Uh, I, important for context, uh, these strikes from Yemen, and they're not just coming from like the corner here where the um, al Bab oh, what is it called? Something, the al Manab Strait? Oh, Abab Strait. I don't know. Something, sorry, I'm ignorant. But the the strait here between Djibouti and Yemen, right? They're firing missiles from there, which because it's right there where the ships have to cross. Mm-hmm. But they're also firing missiles, longer range missiles into the Red Sea, as well as drone 
attacking them with drones. Th- these are all weapons that they've procured from uh, Iran. Okay. Who Iran is also backing Hamas. Right. Um, I do think it's important to note that nobody has died, and none of these ships have been sunk by these attacks so far. Did you see the? Uh, there was a picture going around the other day of a an Iranian drone. I don't know what uh, U.S. ship it was, but it was in that area, and there was a, an Iranian drone, and they were like pridefully speaking of being above them. Mm. And I don't know if this whole thing is true or not, but then there's another picture of a U.S. helicopter above the drone mm. just watching them watch yeah. the ship. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be surprised. The U.S. has always had aerial supremacy. For sure. But it does, you know, the 21st century and modern technology do threaten our aerial supremacy because especially specifically because of drones Mm -hmm. now the these carriers that have been there their main function so far has been to shoot down these drones right i think i saw on the news the other day the uss carney shot down 14 drones jeez um but they're you know the houthis have long been described as one of the most marginally suppressed groups in the world Mm -hmm. um but because of technology and, and modern warfare, they're evening the play field a little bit. And they're, of course, they're saying, like, this is in support of Palestine. We will not stop doing this until Israel stops bombing Gaza. Um, I mean, it? that explains the uh, numerous amounts of drones that they're just throwing out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And again, like, this is, you know, this is Iran's support. And that's what the U.S. has been doing there since 2014, since Houthi rebels took the capital is engaging in a proxy war with Iran. That's right. that's the whole point of us doing this. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, we'll say Saudi Arabia, yes, you can chop up journalists into bags and kill Jamal Khashoggi and embassy, and we're not really going to criticize you for that because we need your help in combating uh, terrorism in this region. It's really more probably for fucking oil money than anything, but that's the pretext anyway. I did think it was interesting that China has an anti-piracy task force in the Red Sea, and they're not answering Israel's distress calls. Um, meanwhile, you know the U.S. is arming Israel, and and I just it's it's very funny. Robert Kennedy talks a lot about how while the U.S. has been uh, building bases everywhere, we just announced a new deal with Finland to open up 14 new bases. Oh wow! Right, you know, so Russia war is not ending anytime soon. Wow. Um, but yeah. RFK talks a lot about how while we're doing that, China has been using the Belt and Road Initiative and other methods to build their soft power worldwide. Mm-hmm. And so now we have China there, like saying, "Okay, we're going to do our best to um, protect our the you know the shipping needs we need." Right. But sure. they're not responding to these Israeli distress calls. They're not trying to aggravate the. Um, the situation furthermore mm. whereas the u.s is like we'll fucking shoot down your drones no right. matter what right um and you know china is now poising to take taiwan oh yeah and for you know two three five plus years now the u.s has been saying they're going to do it violently and just recently the news has come out that they've been engaging in talks with different political groups and religious groups trying mm. to build their soft power again so it is just an interesting way to see how different strategies are engaged at a global level. Right. China and the U.S. just re-engaged in military talks. Um, I think further signaling the U.S.'s acknowledgement that we're not. There's not going to be a hot war with China. Just it's there's too much mutually assured destruction there. Yeah. But also, like we're probably not going to be able to uh, compete with them as not compete with, but dominate them as a global hegemon. Yeah. We're gonna have to come to some sort of agreement that says. This is our half of the world. That's yours. Right. We'll do our thing here. You do your thing there. So I mean, that's kind of the way that it should be. But I mean, I agree. listening to NPR this morning, apparently Xi Jinping, and I'm, again, just saying this loosely, uh, Xi Jinping basically said to the White House, um, we are going to take back Taiwan, and we need you to make a statement saying that you back us in that and Whoa. you will basically renege on your statements of saying that you will back Taiwan. Now we need your support. And the White House obviously refused to say that, but I mean, that's a pretty strong statement to ask the White House to say, I don't know, just backtrack what you said about Taiwan yeah. and then actually be pro us taking Taiwan. I don't think the U.S. is going to do that. No, they already said no. Okay. But I mean, that's a hell of a thing to, to ask, you know? Yeah, it's a big ask. Um, but back to the Houthis, I want to read this. This is from Yahya Sari, the spokesman of Yemen's armed forces. He says about America, they've, they've tried us for nine years. If they want to do it again, we are here and ready. 
If America and Israel attack us, they'll commit foolishness they've never committed before. The response will be fierce. Now, obviously, America has far more firepower than Yemen. Right. But the balls as a tiny little, you know, rebel-backed country to even do that. Um, I was listening to, I forget, I'll I'll put his name up in in the post-production, but there was a legal analyst um, on Chris Cuomo's show last night who said that it's very likely that the U.S. strikes within Yemen's borders, Mm -hmm. which could potentially be a global issue. I think it would be. And expand the conflict uh, in a very real way. And then also there's just the implications of, you know, where this is this is going to hurt people at the pump because of the shipping um, diversions. And it kind of, and also, you know, while that's happening in uh, the Panama Canal is also having a big problem because of, um, what's the word? A drought. Oh, really? Because you need a certain amount of water to operate the canal. For so sure. yeah. It's bringing up a larger conversation of deglobalization and saying... Is it really a good idea to have these supply chains be so global where, mm-hmm. you know, a fucking butterfly farts in Taiwan and now the whole world can't Screwed get its up. gizmos and gadgets? I think people should start focusing on taking care, taking care of your own. Oh, dude, we, I, I would love to go back to just where everybody's growing their own food and... Yeah. Hunting in your backyard. Yeah. We really, honestly, what we need is a, an EMP or a solar flare <laughs> to just take... That scares the shit out of me. Uh, it scares me, but I also am like kind of like, oh, it would kind of be nice. Start over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Before we move on to this from this issue, I do want to read this tweet from this girl, Sana Saeed, um, because I think it's a very good way to wrap it up. She says, the most important context for Houthi involvement is that for a decade, Yemenis were starved and bombed by a U.S.-backed KSA slash UAE coalition, and it was allowed to happen. 85,000 Yemeni children started to starved to death. Over 300,000 Yemenis died during the war, 60% because of conditions created. And that's, I don't know if you were listening before, but I was playing a video from Dave Smith where he talked about how a lot of the deaths in Yemen were from cholera, mm-hmm. which vastly affects old old people and children. Yeah. Um, and I do think that's kind of, um, it's ref- not reflective, but it's, um, it rings true. And it reminds us now of the conditions now in Gaza, where a lot of people are dying from starvation. They're right. literally counting the calories that they need to survive, which by the way, is that used to be Israel's job. Mm-hmm. People like don't realize this, but Israel literally had a program where they were like sending food in by the calorie to make right. sure people, because wow. Israel controlled Gaza. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I have on that. Um, we will move. Do you have anything else? No, no. 